Hey there! Welcome to another video where we explore some fascinating topics related to health, psychology, and human well-being. Today, we're diving into the world of positive psychology and its role in promoting overall wellness. Now, positive psychology isn't just about feeling good vibes all the time. It's about understanding the strengths and qualities that allow people to thrive, even in the face of adversity. One of the main goals is to help individuals cultivate a sense of well-being, both mentally and physically. You know, there are so many ways we tend to judge whether someone is ill or not, but the reality is that mental, physical, and spiritual health are all interconnected. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Positive psychology focuses on assessing and enhancing well-being, rather than just treating illnesses. That's why a lot of research has been centered around non-clinical populations. But there's a shift happening, and positive psychology is making its way into healthcare settings too. Throughout history, there have been different eras in how we approach sickness and disease. In the past, it was all about following the doctor's orders to AT. And if you did that, you'd get better. Nowadays, in what's called the third era, we're encouraged to take an active role in promoting our own health and healing. The idea is to see good health as something that can be nurtured and cultivated through our behaviors and mindset. Because let's be real, the way we live our lives has a huge impact on our well-being. Things like getting enough sleep, exercising regularly, not smoking or drinking excessively, and eating a balanced diet can significantly reduce the risk of chronic diseases like cardiovascular problems, depression, and certain cancers. Speaking of chronic illnesses, they're defined as conditions that last for at least three months and can rarely be cured by medication alone. A staggering 88% of Americans over 65 have at least one chronic health condition. And the leading chronic diseases in developed countries include arthritis, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, epilepsy, obesity, and oral health problems. For those dealing with chronic illnesses, one of the biggest challenges, aside from the illness itself, is often their own mindset. It's easy to let pain and discomfort consume you, both mentally and physically. But here's the thing, our bodies have incredible healing capabilities if we nurture them properly. Now, I'm not saying we should ditch medical interventions altogether, but sometimes we neglect our own accountability in the healing process. Doctors and researchers can often tell which patients are truly committed to getting better and which ones might be struggling mentally, emotionally, or physically to help themselves. There's an age-old belief that the mind and body are intrinsically connected. Ancient Greek thinkers firmly believed that to heal someone, you had to address both the mind and the body. They saw inner and outer beauty as a mutual relationship. On the flip side, there's the concept of mind-body dualism which views the mind and body as separate entities. This idea was championed by the French philosopher René Descartes, who tried to understand the mechanics of the human body and how we move. While some of his ideas were revolutionary, he got a few things wrong about how nerves work. Regardless of whether you subscribe to dualism or not, the fact is that there are clear connections and interactions between our mental and physical states. That's where health psychology comes in. It applies psychological theories to understand and promote physical well-being. In our modern times, the way we perceive health has evolved dramatically. We now recognize that being healthy isn't just about being disease-free. It's about achieving a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And while some folks still cling to the mind-body dualism concept, there's been a massive surge in interest surrounding holistic medicines, essential oils, and less invasive approaches to dealing with illnesses. For those living with chronic or long-term illnesses, it's all about learning to adapt and cope. Chronic illnesses can bring additional stresses and worries, and they often change the way we live, see ourselves, and interact with others. But there are ways to overcome these challenges. We all face difficulties, failures, and losses in life. How we choose to respond to those situations is what matters most. It's perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed and want to shut down during tough times. But positive psychologists have found that some people actually thrive under pressure and traumatic situations. Take children, for example. Many see them as fragile and vulnerable, but some kids who experience adversity grow up to be incredibly resilient adults. Resilience is that quality that allows people to overcome hardship and succeed in the face of adversity. 
Psychologists agree that anyone has the potential to develop resilience, which is characterized by traits like persistence, strong motivation, reasonable goal setting, a sense of purpose, and hope for the future. Resilience is a hallmark of good mental health and well-being. Closely related to resilience is the concept of hardiness. Hardy individuals are able to experience high levels of stress without becoming ill, thanks to a personality structure that includes a sense of control, commitment to their activities, and viewing change as an exciting challenge for growth. Hardy people use the darkness in their lives and illnesses not as a crutch, but as a source of strength, control, and courage. Health-related hardiness and resilience are what allow individuals to adapt to their health problems and choose to fight and cope, both mentally, physically, and spiritually. At the end of the day, life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react to it. If we have to take responsibility for our actions, why wouldn't we do the same for our mindset and thought patterns? The mind-body debate will likely rage on for years to come, but one thing is certain, illnesses and diseases happen whether we like it or not. While some conditions are curable, others are manageable or treatable. But oftentimes, we look at them with such negativity that it breeds a sense of defeat. That's where self-management and self-intervention come into play. Self-management education helps patients live their best possible quality of life with their chronic condition. A central concept is self-efficacy, the confidence to carry out behaviors necessary to reach your goals and self-efficacy is heightened when patients excel at solving their own problems. The idea of accepting your condition, adapting to it, and seeing challenges as opportunities for growth can be incredibly empowering. It can help patients maintain a positive mental state, which in turn allows them to better care for themselves and work towards a bright, hopeful future. So there you have it, folks. A deep dive into the fascinating world of positive psychology, its connections to health and well-being, and the power of resilience and self-management in the face of chronic illnesses. Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more fascinating discussions on the human experience. Until next time, sleep well, dream better.